One of the most common things that people do on computers today is surf the web. You have a web browser and it allows you to get information from other computers. There's actually sockets and TCP involved in this, but there are more layers on top of that. When you are surfing the web, you're generally using uh, what's called HTTP, the Hypertext Transport Protocol, which is a text-based interface that computers can use to, to talk to one another. And you often specify where things are located using what are called URLs, the Uniform Resource Locator. There happens to be a class in java.net called URL. And so you have examples of URLs. These are the things that you put into your web browser, though the proper URL does have a protocol at the beginning. It's not always HTTP. There are, there are other protocols that you can use. We'll actually see some a different one here in, in a few videos. Um, you can create these by giving a full spec or by breaking it out into the different parts of the specification. And URL has a number of different methods, one of which is called open stream, which gives you back an input stream that you can use to read the contents of whatever it is that you have connected to. Uh, there's also this open connection um, that can give you some additional information uh, about the, the URL you've, uh, that you're linking to. URLs are also used in a number of other different places in the library. So, for example, in the Scala libraries, we have used IO source to read input from files. They're good for doing basic text input. And we have typically called the from file, passing it either a file or a string. But there is also a from URL. And so you can use a source to read things from uh, across the network just by saying from URL um, instead of of saying from file. A lot of times the things that you might be reading could be images. The Scala FX library, the image can take a URL and it will load that in from uh, from across the network. Though you do have to be a little bit careful with those images because there can be latency in loading them in. They might not be available to you immediately. What I'd like to do is just very quickly show how we could use the URL object to read in data as opposed to the, the from URL. From URL would be very simple. <laughs> in fact, it would be, it's trivial to use that. I guess we can, because it's so trivial, we can do that real quick. I can say val source equals io.source.from URL. And I'm just going to pull down the contents of, for example, my website. Uh, okay, which is a very basic, plain HTML based website, everything static, nothing fancy going on there. Um, need to use a lowercase f on the from. And now we have an iterator, and I can simply say source dot mk string. And there's the contents of that. I'll close the source so that we don't have that open. And yeah, that is, that's the, the website that I have there. So this is very easy to do with a source if I was just reading um, text data. But it's good to see how we might do that same type of functionality using the URL. So I'm going to import java.io, actually java.net.underscore, and I'll also import java.io.underscore just in case I need something from that library. And let's go ahead and let's make a URL. So this is one of those java.net.urls, and I'm going to give it the same website. Okay, that builds a URL, and now I want to read from it. Of course, the open stream will give me back an input stream. Uh, depending upon how I want to do things, we, we could just do that. We'll get a, a regular input stream. So val is equals URL dot open stream. 
I probably should buffer this. I'm not going to. Um, that way we could uh, get these things, you know, one element. Uh, well, because I'm going to be reading them one character at a time or one byte at a time, the buffering would improve speeds reading across the, the network. But um, I'm not too worried about that at this point. So now this is an input stream that has methods like read to read a single byte. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to read all of the bytes that we have there. And I need to store them in something. Um, a byte array would be kind of the normal type of thing, except I can't do this with a, a byte array because I don't know how many I'm going to be reading. I don't know how big that is, at least at this point. So what I could do instead is I could make a buffer. So I want to make a collection dot mutable dot buffer of bytes and it's empty and then we're going to using a while loop just read in all the bytes from that input stream so I'll is dot read so that will read in one of these bytes that's the first character there and I'm going to use a little while loop to read in all of them. So it turns out that if you remember looking in the API, read returns a negative value when it's done reading. So as long as that value is greater than or equal to zero, we want to keep reading. So I'm going to add our data into the buffer. So that result converted to a byte and then I am going to read the next one. That completes our while loop and that should go through, oh, I called it buff instead of buffer. There we go. Now, if that worked, I should be able to look at the contents of buff and it has a whole bunch of numbers in there. Um, how can we get these numbers to be a string? Well, there is a constructor for a string that takes a byte array. We can convert our buffer to an array and get a string and sure enough, there's that same website. Okay, so we can use the input stream to read things. Uh, the way we were doing this here wasn't all that efficient because we're reading it by individual bytes. It would be more efficient not just to buffer it, but also to potentially read in the entire thing at once. But for that, we'd need to know the length. And this is where that connection information comes in. The URL connection happens to have inside of it uh, methods that give us, for example, the content length. And so we could use this to allocate an array of that size, and then we don't have to write our own while loop we could just allocate an array of get content length and then read everything into there. Uh, let's do is.close and let's make our URL again. val URL equals a new URL of Okay, and then I can figure out how long this would be by getting a connection. So the connection is going to be URL dot open connection. And then I can make my, I'll call this one buffer. This will be our array uh, of bytes is array dot fill of the number of things I want is connection dot get content length. And then I am going to do this as 0.2 byte. And that should give me a big buffer of bytes. Now I can get my input stream again. IS equals URL dot open stream. And I can do IS dot read into buffer and that reads in all of the values and it gives us back how many uh, bytes were read 
and I can make a new string around that buffer and there's our page again. Okay, so those are just a few different ways that you could read the contents of information out on the web. All of these were reading them as text because I was reading a, a basic web page, uh, but you can read other information as well. Um, it can be binary data and whatnot. Read it in and then do whatever conversions you want. URLs are just used very broadly for these types of things, so it's handy to know how you can interact with stuff basically that, that's on the web using the URL class.